Gentlemen, great to see you. The World Cup for both of you is coming very, very fast. Have you been swapping notes? <laughs> yeah, we, we have. We, we've spoken. Gareth kindly come into one of our camps. Um, it was quite a, an intense night, I remember. It was, a, it was a night when I needed to get my point across about certain things and um, I'd like to, for it to have been a more teaching night. It, were, it weren't one of them. It was a straightforward meeting, if you know what I mean. So we had a chat later and we stayed till the end of the night and I learned loads. He's a talented guy and he's, he's been through it, World Cups and, you know, home, home championships and big tournaments what he's, where he's led, led our country in this country as well. So I, I learned a lot, learned a lot. Did you learn a lot from rugby league? Yeah, <laughs> well, funny enough, um, I listened to a podcast that Sean did uh, during lockdown and it had a massive impact on me how he saw dealing with people and you know what he'd learned from his own experiences through life um, so we then connected uh, we had a zoom call didn't we yeah. during that yeah. period and then to be able to come in and meet the team because the challenge he's got is incredible I mean we would complain about how long we've got to prepare and of course Sean's got to pull this all together with a really limited preparation time so you know we're similar going to Qatar we've got five days with the team before our first game so that's one of the challenges for international sport get your messages across re really quickly um, and prioritizing the areas you want to work on. Yeah I was, I was going to ask you both difference between being a club manager or head coach and, a, and an international manager you're both in the same position so you can empathize with each other how have you both found that transition? to moving into the international environment where you don't have the players all the time? Well, Gareth is a lot more experienced. In, 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 he's been in tournaments, big tournaments, in a country where it's our national game. So the pressure Gareth's under is, is immense. So um, it's been me asking him questions about, are you caught with uh, certain things and managing clubs? And, you know, where I, I've, I've, I'm very used to coaching a team. So it's, it's every day, 24 hours a day. So. I've learned a lot of Gareth about managing pressures of different elements of club rugby. When when you think about how you would have done that at a club, what have you found the biggest difference to be with the national team? Um, Prioritising the key uh, things of how we play, um, because there's lots of things I want to do with, with our England team, because we've got a group of players come in, some of them don't know me very well. They have an idea of what I'm about. And there's lots of things I want to change, but you, you just can't physically give give them all the changes you want. So me and my staff prioritise certain things. Um, like for instance, building pressure on teams in attack and defence and, and then delivering that to the team, uh, delivering that to individuals every week. And then you've got the pressures of what, what the club coaches want, you know, and how, how that doesn't fit in with what you want. So that's a difficult part. You know, I will ask you about that in a few weeks when we yeah. have a chat and get together. And but the the thing what um, I, I would say this with Gareth and dear, what I admire about Gareth is very very um, switched on, educated, and he come away from our meeting not really an obsessive rugby league fan, but sent me a message saying if I was a player in there today, I'd have I'd have gone away with these points, and the points what he what he wrote down was exactly the points I wanted the players to drive home with. So it was a, it convinced me that was a great night. I know you've spent a lot of time studying other sports. I mean, you've, been, you've been to the Super Bowl, for example. You've, you know, you've covered a lot of different aspects during your time as England manager and trying to get threads from, from various sports. What do you think that you've learned from rugby league in particular? I mean, how much rugby league have you seen over the course of time? Uh, quite a lot, because yeah. um, when I, um, when I was younger, we lived in Lancashire for for a while, and we live in Yorkshire now. So, um, and, when, and when I was yeah. in London, Fulham had a team, so I used to go and watch them play, which was mostly lads from the north who'd come down and Reg Bowden and people like that. Um, so, yeah, we, my dad was more a rugby man, so we always had rugby on in the house. Um, but I think you just learn from watching team environments and trying to create a culture around the team and so everybody's detail is different but you know we were talking with Eddie Jones earlier and talking about the shift maybe in 
all sports towards more aggressive defending and quicker attacking you know the defenses are well organized in all sports now and how you how you punish them more quickly i think that's a challenge we're facing across all sports so everybody's technical detail is different but there's lots of themes i think that are similar yeah that you've you're preparing for a world cup in qatar but you had the experience of a major tournament on home so very very recently yeah. which is of course showing what you're going to be experiencing in a couple of months how would you compare and contrast the two and the advantages and disadvantages of playing a world cup here in england yeah, well, we we in the lead up, you start to talk about um, the possible disadvantages, and the danger is you actually forget it's a great advantage to be at home. Yeah, <laughs> and um, you know you can start to put barriers in front of yourself. Oh, we've got to be careful about this and careful about that. But the fact is, you've got your fans, you've got familiar surroundings, you know, food, everything else. So I think sometimes we've got to focus on, hang on a minute, you know, this is good for us. You know, we'd rather be at home. We don't lose so many at home and, um, and you know, making those positives clear for the players and all the staff, really. Yeah. I mean, so the Lionesses make a huge impact this summer off the back of that home support as well. That must be something that you cannot wait to take advantage of in the next couple of months. Yeah. And you saw that benefit last year too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it is. Um, what they did was fantastic. You know, I really enjoy watching them. And, and it's something we need to take advantage of, you know, making sure that Newcastle ground is full for the small game. Uh, but we need to give them something to be proud of as well. And that's me and my staff uh, working out to make sure that the detail, what we give our players, is achievable and it's going to make a difference. And in terms of the, uh, the way in which you're preparing for these two tournaments, how do you handle the, the scrutiny from the media and from the wider public who are expecting you to do very well, perhaps win on home soil, and perhaps for your, yourselves to go one better than you did at the Euros last year? I, I like stress. I, 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 uh, I, I finished coaching uh, Wigan in 2018, yeah. and I wanted to get back into it because I missed the... the pressure of we have to win every weekend and you have to work hard with the detail to come up with a game plan to win that game every week and I missed that uh, we must win uh, need so that's what I've got with this World Cup you know it's been a long time coming so but the pressure is what I'll be under from uh, the rugby league crowds is far different to uh, national sport and what Gary's been through with European Championship. You're saying that now. Cups. Might be, might be. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. might be pretty well, intense I'll be on the for the Gareth it. <laughs> yeah, if that's the case. Well, I mean, you, you, you saw how much everything was focused on yourselves last summer and the, the hype around that final. And I mean, you've got. I guess you'll have a little bit of sympathy for him if it gets to that level in, in November because you know what it's like. Yeah, uh, but I think the key is that. Um, you can choose to listen to all of that and look there are some things you can't avoid you know we had people you know out in the streets waiting for us as we got towards the final which was brilliant to see and that lifts everybody but day to day the the rolling news coverage the you've got to cut, try and detach yourself from that because you're in you're in a bubble and you can think it's actually more important you know people's world is going on out there they're not just there for football or for yeah. for rugby so the biggest thing is you want to do well as a team you know the people that you're working with that's the thing that drives everybody you want to be there for the guy alongside you and um and the rest you know, if you choose to let it take over, it can become too much. So, um, you know, I, I think it, I think what he's really good at is keeping things in uh, on the level. You know, not not overreacting if there's a difficult result, and making sure people's feet are on the ground if they've played well. Okay, how how do we get better? And I think as coaches, that's what we're trying to do. And y you have to focus on performance, and the winning is a is an outcome of that. Whatever happens in the tournament, of course. We hope that there's a massive legacy left off the back of you know, the men's, women's wheelchair tournaments happening yeah. um, and the eyeballs that are going to be on that. And we see this announcement today. Um, how does that tie in today with what Rugby League are doing in terms of that wider social impact? Because this is an amazing project that the RFL have got involved in with the yeah, FA. Th this is fantastic. Mm. And uh, when, when, you, when you consider it's 50 days before, this Friday before we play some more. So uh, to get 
the message out of getting more people playing our great game. I, I love sport. I love football. I love American football and I love rugby. I, I, I learned something every time, like this morning, I spoke to Gareth and Eddie upstairs and, and I've learned a few things. So every day is a learning day. So for us to um, be involved in something like this and having more kids playing any sport, you know, girls, boys, boys able-bodied, you know, non-able-bodied, if they get out and play, I know what it's like to, and Gareth definitely does, the the feeling of building friendships. You don't have to be a, a professional sportsman. Just being in, involved with a team and making friends for life, it's, it's uh, that's why this is such an important foundation, what they've done. And your respective preparations, are they all going well? I mean, you've got a little bit longer to get yourselves ready for Qatar, but it's, it must be a whole hands to the pump now, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're behind the scenes um, working on plans for the opposition and um, we were out in Qatar in the summer making sure training grounds and hotels and everything were fine. Of course, for both of us, the, the most important part of preparation you can't do because we haven't got the players <laughs> until the end. So every plan looks good on a flip chart and yeah. on the board, but we've got people to come into it. So you know, that's the bit that you're hoping you know, especially we've got an intense period. You're hoping your best players, in particular, come through without injuries because um, that that's key. You want you want your best players available. And you've got a hotline to each other if, if if you're sitting there in the dark wondering what to do. That's probably very helpful Absolutely. for the next couple I mean, of months. <laughs> when I, when I think back in, in my coaching career, um, I'm a very proud Wigan lad, and uh, I'm a very proud Englishman. And the thought of um, coaching my country never thought I'd never thought I'd achieve that. Um, so the chance to coach my country in an home World Cup is, a, is an absolute dream and uh, it's something I'm not going to miss. I'm going to work hard and make sure my team's prepared um, for the first battle against Samoa. Well, we wish you both the best of luck. Thank, Thank you very much. Keep those phone calls going. Oh yeah. If it means England win. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.